Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. And in this video, I'm going to discuss my initial thoughts on the results of the three by-elections which took place yesterday, in which the Conservatives lost the two very safe seats, but held the marginal one. I'm going to be discussing my general thoughts, but also how I think Labour got their tactics very wrong in the Tory-held Uxbridge and South Ryslip seat. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel. Right, so what should we talk about for the next two days? I know, by-elections. So the Tories lost two of the three by-elections and yet they will be absolutely delighted today. There'll be Tory MPs cheering today. Many Tory MPs said that winning any of the by-elections would seem like a win and the one they thought they would have had a better chance in is Selby. The fact that it was Uxbridge is probably the best outcome for Sunak personally because although it was down to a local issue, which will not help him in the general election. It would have been better for the Tories in general to have won Selby and lost Uxbridge. It at least stops Boris Johnson going around saying, I would have won it, you know. I would have won the seat. Because Sunak can now say, well, I actually did win the seat, Boris. But I said a while ago that I thought Labour should have played a different card here. The issue was ULES, the ultra-low emission zones in London, which are being expanded across the, the area. They are unpopular in like conservative areas like this. The reason the Tories were able to capitalise was by blaming Labour for it, because Labour's Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, has been rolling it out. However, and I said this weeks ago, both the original scheme and the expansion are a conservative policy. So a few weeks ago, I did a video, the Conservatives, they picked absolutely the right strategy in making the by-election about ULES. Of course, if they'd have fought it on national policies, they'd have had their arse handed to them. There was an independent candidate standing on a specifically anti-ULES platform, which had the potential, if they were any good, to hive some votes away from the Tories, but that didn't happen. They won fewer votes than Count Binface and way fewer than Lawrence Fox, who had Reform UK backing. But aside from the Conservatives and Labour, nobody else even got a thousand votes. So tactical voting was clearly in evidence. And yet the Conservative candidate still won by just under 500 votes. Labour did try to adapt their strategy by suggesting that they weren't all that convinced about the speed of the ULEDGE rollout. But as long as my arse looks south, I will not understand why didn't they just point out that ULES was set up by Boris Johnson when he was Mayor of London and how Boris Johnson, as Prime Minister of the Conservative government, forced Sadiq Khan to roll it out to the wider area quickly. In return, he, he was going to withhold funding if Khan didn't agree to roll it out across the whole of London by 2023, which is now. It's all well documented, not necessarily well known, but it is all well documented. Why didn't Labour neutralise the issue? They can't go, oh, we don't agree with you, Les. Oh, that's ridiculous. Of course they do. Why didn't they point out, well, yeah, we support it. OK, the rollout, the speed of the rollout might be a bit swifter than we would agree with. But actually, that was, that was the Conservatives. They forced that on us. Why didn't they neutralise the issue? By pointing out that, yes, Labour are carrying it out, but it's a Tory policy. This will just give succor to Rishi Sunak. There's a, there's a good and disappointing way to see these by-election results, of course. The positive way is by seeing that the Conservatives lost two really safe seats. Both Selby and Somerton were won by roughly 20,000 majorities at the last election. Really safe seats. Labour won Selby with in excess of a 20-point swing by over 4,000 votes. The Lib Dems absolutely smashed Somerton. Couldn't believe it. They had a 28-point swing and a majority of 11,000 votes. 11,000 vote majority. They overturned a large Tory majority. They won by 11,000 votes in a by-election with just over 44% turnout. Now, 44% turnout is actually really good for a by-election, but it's still way lower than for a general election. I mean, for good night, it's a stonking lead. The Tories were smashed. That was a proper drubbing. And I'll also point something else out about the results. In both of the seats where Reform UK stood, they got under 4% of the vote. Now, I've said a few times, 
the poll rating for them with the online posters, posters rather, is inflated. Like even YouGov, I say like the two good ones are YouGov and Ipsos Mori in terms of they get accurate results when you compare them to actual polls, as in elections. So YouGov are really good at predicting results, but even they are overinflating the support for Reform UK. Whereas Ipsos Mori, who have a different system, they carry out telephone polling, they get their share right, their recent poll had Reform UK roughly what we've seen with comparing with these actual by-election results. So we are seeing this, and we're seeing it consistently in by-elections as well. Reform UK, when you look at how many votes they actually get compared with what the online pollsters say, Reform UK don't get anywhere near as much. But as I say, the positive reading into these results is that the Conservatives have very few seats so safe they can be sure of retaining them. I mean, take Selby and Ainsley, for example. Oh, it's going to be tight. It could be decided by a few votes. Labour won it by over 4,000 votes. And this is a, I mean, this is a rural seat. <laughs> it's a rural seat. Labour shouldn't be winning these. The Conservatives, uh, sorry, the Lib Dems can nick rural seats off the Conservatives. Labour don't. So they haven't just, even if it, even if the Tories had won that by, say, 500 votes, that would have been really worrying for the Conservatives that Labour could even get that much of a swing because you'd look at seats that don't have 20,000 majorities, like 15,000 majorities, you think, well, they're gone. But L Labour absolutely pole vaulted over the line. You know, and it may well be that the Tories win both of these seats back at the general election. We could have the weird situation where the Tories win Selby back but lose Uxbridge. <laughs> You know, although I will say the boundary changes that are happening to Selby, because Selby, at the moment it's Selby and Ainsley, and it basically just becomes Selby. So Labour have a better chance of retaining Selby. But that doesn't stop Conservative MPs with equal or smaller, smaller majorities, as I say, being really worried by these results. But Sonak will be delighted at holding Oxbridge. Uh, even, you know, it was only a few hundred votes. And it was only down to having a local issue to work on as well. You know, this will not occur in the general election. London is one of the very few parts of the country where Labour have any sort of executive power. So blaming Labour for anything doesn't really work across the country. And even Uxbridge, as I say, there's a good chance that actually that will fall when people switch their vote from protest vote because it's a by-election, do what you like, to actually we're voting for the government now. And in a by-election, as I say, people can vote for all sorts of reasons. It's purely symbolic. It, it makes no difference to parliamentary decisions. Yes, the Conservatives have lost another couple of MPs, but they've still got a large majority. But in the general election, people are mostly voting for the government. That is the main driver. Which government do we want? But losing Oxbridge is still really... I, I, I was very disappointed when I woke up. My partner told me, ah, they've held Oxbridge. Oh, bollocks. I didn't expect it, in all honesty... Selby was the one I was like it was quite clear that Labour were confident about Selby but that was the one for me and yet they smashed that by 4,000. Oxbridge I knew that it was going to be tight because ULES was clearly having an issue and Labour were not neutralising it and yet you still thought they should still get over the line so I didn't expect it. I'm not sure the Conservatives expected it either. It means respite for Sunak. He can hail it as a win. It will mean the pressure pressure on him is now much lessened. Obviously, those ranged against him within his own party. They're going to point at the two really safe seats that fell. But so many people were expecting all three results to go against him. And there's another boon for Sunak as well. Boris Johnson. Now, I hope I got this right. I had a quick look. Boris Johnson, I don't think, ever retained a single by-election. He did win a by-election. He won Hartlepool during the vaccine bounce period of early 2021, right? A red wall seat that actually he would have won in 2019 had Reform UK not been standing. But he did take it in that by-election of 2021. Reform UK stood there, but they got like a few hundred votes. By then, he was riding high in the polls, vaccine bounce, all the rest of it. And uh, Keir Starmer had only just started to reform the party. He'd only been leader for like a year. And that went, that went to him. But in every Conservative seat, which went to a by-election, of which there have been quite a few now since the general election. Oxbridge and South Ryslip is, I think I'm right in saying, the only one which has been held by the Tories. And Rishi Sunak is the one who held it. Extra symbolic because it was Johnson's seat. And Boris Johnson, remember this, no matter what he says, Boris Johnson only stood down from Parliament because he didn't think he would win it. Because he saw what was going to happen, right? Boris Johnson was going to be suspended. 
Then there was going to be a recall petition that would have been signed. He didn't think he would win that by-election. That's why he stood down. That's ultimately why he stood down. Now, Sunak's won it with someone who's not Boris Johnson. That'll sting Johnson, I think. If Sunak plays his cards right, he can get a lot of capital out of this. Even though he lost the other two and much safer seats. He can now say he has done what Boris Johnson never could, held a Conservative seat in a by-election. He can also say we all know why Boris Johnson ran, ran screaming from Parliament because he didn't think he'd win his own seat. Well, I won his own seat. And that's what makes this so disappointing. Seeing them lose another two safe seats should be absolutely brilliant. And it is. It, it absolutely bodes well for the general election. The, because both of those results were better than expected. Where that ULES local issue wasn't in, wasn't in there, both Selby and Summerton and Friend were both smashed. Smashed. The Uxbridge result doesn't actually affect the state of play when you're looking at the general election. It was an aberration based on a local issue, which is not going to affect target seats next year. But it is all about perception as well. Losing all three would have put Sunak in real trouble. His MPs would have become even more panicked. And what little co cohesion exists in the party would further deteriorate. Now, the Tory media, I mean, it wasn't going to talk about the by-elections at all. Well, now it can go, oh, 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 there was a by-election. There was a by-election in, in Uxbridge and South Ryslip. Oh, look, the Conservatives held it. Well done, Rishi Sunak. Weren't there two other by-elections? No, I don't think so. You know, Sunak is probably actually quite cheerful this morning. Mind you, I will finish off on a positive note. It's not all doom and gloom. For those opposed to the Conservatives anyway, it was noted that Rishi Sunak hid away yesterday. Why wasn't he out and about pushing for the win in Uxbridge? Why, why was that? Why wasn't he tweeting for people to go out and vote? Keir Starmer was. Keir Starmer was tweeting, can you go out and vote? No, no, nothing from Rishi Sunak, hiding away. Is it because Sunak knows he's an electoral liability? It's very odd for the leader of a political party fighting by-elections to operate radio silence on the day of the election itself when you want your, your support to turn out and vote. It makes you wonder how party strategists intend to use him in the general election if they couldn't even trust him to tweet messages of support while the polls were open. Like, there were all sorts of photos of some of the members of the cabinet um, doing the phone thing. Oh, can you get out and vote? Can you get out and vote? Swella Bravman was there. Greg Hans was there. Oliver Dowden was there. Rishi Sunak wasn't. Why wasn't Rishi Sunak doing any campaigning in the last few days? Hmm? In terms of the outlook for next year, nothing changes with the Tories holding Oxbridge. There was very clear tactical voting in all three by-elections, helping the best-placed anti-Tory candidate. In all three, it was absolutely massive. The tactical voting was so strong that Lawrence Fox of the Reclaim Party is boasting that he beat the Lib Dems. They were voting for Labour, you chump. I mean, let's look at the swings. Lib Dems, in, I may talk uh, in another video about the, the data a bit more, but Lib Dems in Selby, down 5.3%. That's tactical voting. In Oxbridge, down 4.6%. Tactical voting. Labour in Somerton, down 10.3%. That is tactical voting. Those figures point to a real tactical voting effort. And if it's like that in the general election, and why wouldn't it be? Because the stakes are much higher in a general election. In the by-election, it was a protest vote. It was, to, it was to put pressure on the Tories. In the general election, it is to change the government. And, and that happens in the general election. It doesn't matter when Sunak tries to hold it, the Tories are curtains. In fact, on the strength of these figures, tactical voting will take off way more Tory votes than Reform UK, effectively, although they will be not taking Tory votes, but adding to Labour or Lib Dems, depending on who is the tactical choice. But the combination of the two has the potential to completely obliterate them. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.